Hello my friends, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, I want to talk to you. You're probably Canadian, or you're American, or you're just an immigrant here in the UK, but I wanna to talk to you about how you can get a phone if you're new here. Because if you're new here, you may realize that you can't go and get like a phone plan, and it's starting to get a little bit costly by just getting like pay-as-you-go minutes. So I am here to talk to you about how you can do this. So if you're new here, hello, my name is Nicole. I am Canadian, but I have been living here in England for the last three years. I typically post videos on this channel about homemaking and life here in Bristol with my husband. However, because a lot of you have reached out to me on Facebook and on Instagram and here on YouTube about how I moved to the UK after posting this video right here, I decided to create a whole series around the most common questions that you guys have asked me in the DMs, in the messages, and in the comments. So with that, let's get into the video. Let's talk about how you can get a phone here. <laughs> so being completely honest with you guys, it was harder for me to open up a bank account here and get a phone here than it was for me to get the visa to live here. It made no sense. It was like, why is it so hard to live here, but it wasn't hard to be approved to move here beyond me. So the hardest thing about getting a phone plan in the UK once you move here is if you do not have a permanent address. However, <laughs> It is like a chain of events that just screws your life over. So for example, you can't go open up a bank account unless you can prove your address, but you can't rent something unless you can prove your address and you can't rent something unless you have a bank that they like confirm to take your rent out, out of. Now, if you find somebody that is renting a house that is like privately renting a house, you usually can get them to work with you a little bit and they will um, be a little bit lenient. Some people I've heard like in this situation, the landlord asks for like six months rent up front because there is no proof and it makes you actually feel like you were like a juvenile that came from like a country that wasn't in the first world if i'm quite honest and it it's challenging because you're like i can't get ahead thankfully i had paul but being completely honest with you guys because when i moved here paul and i didn't want it to be like i was just like you know we were married right off the bat so there was still a lot of things that i did off of my own accord without paul's help i have a whole video that i'll list right here talking to you about why i didn't want to live with paul before marriage and that might give you a little bit of an understanding of why i went about doing things in a certain way so I actually didn't open up a bank account with Paul having my address as here Paul did not help me get a phone Paul did not help me with any of these things looking back on it I wish that he did but I also understand his reservations as it being a new relationship and um, things were just moving quite fast when that's not what we had planned for again you'll want to watch that video that I had just previously linked to kind of understand where we were coming from so now with saying all of that you're gonna have to try and see if you can get a fixed address as soon as possible so maybe put it out on your Facebook ask someone do they know anyone that lives in the UK that would be okay with you using their address as a fixed address that's personally what I did one of my friends Stephanie her cousin lives here and they were okay with me putting their address as my fixed address and then I did that before I moved over here so when I got here I was able to get a phone in a lot sooner fashion than I probably would have done and that is what helped me open up a bank account here as well is that my friend's cousin put me on one of their utility bills and then I was able to take that utility bill and then take it to the bank and to um, O2 to open up my phone plan now during that time when I didn't have the phone plan yet I basically got my Canadian cell phone unlocked and then I was I was able to purchase a sim card and then just pay as you go for any type of phone or internet usage that I used. This got really costly because you use the internet all the time. You use your phone all the time and you don't, when you don't know where you're going, you're going to use the internet and the maps on your phone all the time. So I was eating, I was eating through this like crazy. Now, I'm pretty sure it was the year that I left Canada. It became, it be, like all phone companies had to make it so phones were unlocked. So yeah, it shouldn't be a problem, especially if you're coming from Canada to get your phone unlocked. Now, when I first applied to get a phone, like a phone plan, even though I had a fixed address, 
I think there wasn't enough time of me being recorded at that address so I actually had to wait three months before I got the approval like the credit approval to open up a like a phone plan so just know even if you do get a fixed address it might take some time for the credit to be established for you to open up a phone a phone plan so the next thing that you will need when you are finally approved to open up that phone plan is you will need two utility bills so if you want to ensure that you can prove your address with two utility bills that is going to be what you need in order to open up a phone contract so the next thing that I definitely think that you could do better than I did is shop around for sims so for me personally I just went off of what my husband recommended but it was when I got connected in different like Canadians in the UK Facebook groups and I heard other people talking about the sim cards that they were using that I then started to understand oh there are like way cheaper options out there that I don't need to be paying what I'm paying right now so I went with O2 in the beginning but I believe three had way better options and gift gaff had way better options so make sure that you shop around when you are in that phase of just um, having a sim card and paying as you go so the last thing that I want to talk about isn't really going to help you get a phone here in the UK but it is going to put your mind at ease a little bit because you guys there is free internet everywhere so in that beginning time when I was using a sim card I definitely was connecting to any internet or wi-fi as much as i can so i wasn't eating through the pay-as-you-go wi-fi data plan so just know that if you do run out and if you are wasting a lot of money on these sim cards and pay-as-you-go cards you will be able to connect to a lot of wi-fi options there's certain zones that will have wi-fi and then equally like most buses have wi-fi restaurants have wi-fi like honestly you'll be all right what I would do is is that if I was leaving the house I would put it in my phone where I was going and then I would hit the go button on like my map apps and then it would I would just like follow along on the dot to make sure that uh, it was taking me where I thought it was taking me or just like use it as like an old-school map if that makes sense so I would have to often walk like from the house to the bus stop and then on the bus stop at the bus stop I would just be able to get on the bus and then watch the the map like just follow the GPS on the map hopefully that makes sense anyways my friends I know this is a very quick probably straight to the point video especially if you are British or you've lived in the UK for some time but honestly opening up a bank account and getting the phone was the two things that took me the longest time and you would think like they're not that difficult of things and I'll tell you I'll tell you what even right now I haven't officially been here for three years and I think three months I'll be here for three years I still am not even qualified for a bank card that gives me contactless tap it is a challenge so some of these things might be super self-explanatory to you if you're from the UK or if you've lived here for a long time but to a foreigner it's quite difficult so I hope you enjoyed this video if you're Canadian you have if you have any more questions all of our details are listed in the description box feel free to reach out and I will try and help you guys as much as I can thank you so much for watching I hope you subscribed and I'll see you in the next one <laughs> bye